Chuck Olenek. I'm a reenactor. And for 36 years in the classroom, I reenacted uh, history by dressing the part. And I would have the appropriate music for the time period and culture in the background. I'd bring in artifacts and realia to try to breathe some life into the subject. And what I'm on is uh, a very pretentious sounding mission odyssey. I intend to visit each of the California missions, Assistencias, those are the spin-off missions, and the Estancias, those are the ranchos, the ones I can find evidence of, and the Presidios, the fortifications to protect the missions, and I intend to visit each of these places in garb and document what's going on with them and tell a bit of uh, the that place's uh, story. And part of why I'm doing this, I have a house full of garb at home. You know, after 36 years of teaching and doing this stuff. Um, I also have a passion for bringing the past to life. You know, I guess that's why they call it living history. And I have a desire to preserve landmarks, and this is particularly telling in this particular film and in the previous one because landmarks go away. I'm going up to Mission San Buenaventura. I didn't finish telling the story, and the mission was... Uh, Actually, the mission and also Ventura City Hall was in the news quite a bit because there was a statue of Father Sarah. And there's finally people listening to the Chumash, the native Californians, their descendants, uh, about what an outrage it is to have a statue of you know, someone who represents the mission period on public land. And rather than confining this to, you know, a religious area. And so, that statue went away. And it's apparently going to be put up at the mission. Well, since I started this mission odyssey, and by the way, I'm doing this in the midst of COVID, uh, I've visited some places, which was kind of difficult because a lot of places were uh, closed up, but when I managed to get in, I'm documenting what I'm seeing, and for instance, I saw in June at Mission San Fernando, actually the park across the street, Grand Park, there was a statue of Father Sarah that had been there like forever, and when I went back um, about a month ago, so that'd be like in uh, early November, the statue was gone. And so there was enough of a public outcry. Yet there were candles still there. They were obviously being placed on the stand where the statue had been. So there's mixed feelings. There's controversy. And I want to go document it because... As I would tell my students, history isn't supposed to make you feel comfortable, it's supposed to make you think. So, I hope you stick with me on this journey. This is Mission San Buenaventura, and it was founded in 1782, but it wasn't supposed to be founded back then. It was originally supposed to have been the third mission in the chain of 21 missions 
begun by Father Sarah. But it turns out, instead of being the third, it's going to be the ninth. And this was the last one that Father Sarah dedicated. Mission San Buenaventura, the ninth mission in the chain, was dedicated to St. Bonaventure and was built as a quadrangle, as were most of the missions. Inside the quadrangle were Padre's quarters, uh, various shops and storage facilities. There was also an extensive walled garden marked in green on the map. Behind me, over this fence, this is what's left of the aqueduct that fed water to Mission San Buenaventura. It originally extended about a half mile north and it flowed through here deposited water at the mission. It was like a total of seven miles. The reason I'm showing you this is this is a critical part of the machine as far as making this area agriculturally productive for the Spanish. And then later during the Rancho period. Under the direction of Padre Cambon, the Chumash natives constructed this seven-mile earth and masonry zanja or aqueduct, which brought water from the San Buenaventura River to the mission. It brought this to a holding tank or settling tank, which is on the grounds of a Holy Cross School. This is called El Caballo, and this is the other end of the aqueduct that started about six miles away. So this is gonna be where the water was gonna end up and this was going to basically allow for the mission to exist. Now, over time, when things fell apart and you know the mission lost its land and the town of, you know, Buena, of Ventura grew up from San Buenaventura, this became the jail. Once the water got to El Caballo, it traveled through two underground pipelines to an adobe cistern and also to a lavanderia which was in front of the church. Why El Caballo? Well, the mouth of the fountain was carved in the shape of an animal head, like at Santa Barbara. Looks like the horse head didn't survive. So across the street, that grocery store over there, that's where the Lavenderia used to be. That's also where the fountain used to be. However, now there's a building there. So I would imagine that's probably why that fountain was constructed. My guess is that the fountain was constructed in this way to show us how the Lavenderia worked. However, be careful, I tripped in it. This influx of water allowed a wide variety of crops to grow, and there were even exotic crops like bananas and coconuts being grown here. Some of these crops would be shipped to support El Presidio Real de Santa Barbara, as did the other missions in the military district. About 10 years, a dozen years after Mission San Buenaventura was founded. A British explorer, George Vancouver, came into the area. He had been bouncing between the northern part of the California coast, the northern part of the Pacific coast. I'll let you guess where he was exploring based on his name, Vancouver. And bouncing between there and the Sandwich Islands. Well, in the San Buenaventura area, 
he had ended up visiting a number of the Chumash villages and he named a particular point after one of the Padres, uh, Padre Dumetz. Well, when he wrote it down on the map, instead of writing D-U-M-E-T-Z, he just wrote D-U-M-E. And the name kind of stuck. And the Spanish it, the Spanish were calling it Point Dume. But everyone calls it Point Doom. During the mission period, Mission San Buenaventura was also a stopping point for whaling ships. A lot of American ships were stopping by to resupply there, replenish their stores because the mission was very productive as far as food. And they were also there to trade for the cured cattle hides or California dollars or Yankee dollars uh, that were mentioned in the book two years before the mast. In 1812, there's a major earthquake, and that's going to cause extensive damage to the missions at San Juan Capistrano, San Gabriel, uh, San Fernando, and Ventura, I believe Santa Barbara, and there was uh, lesser damage at the other missions. So San Buenaventura had to be abandoned. Where did the people go? I'm thinking that a lot of them ended up moving to the Asistencias while the rebuilding was taking place. When they returned three months later, it took about a year to repair the belfry and the stone face of the mission church, which ended up with six and a half foot thick walls. The second time was in 1818 when the pirate Hippolyte Bouchard was rampaging up and down the coast of Alta California. Well, more precisely, down the coast of Alta California. He'd started up in Monterey and burned the Presidio. And in the meantime, the governor had sent warnings to all the different missions and uh, told the Padres, ooh, hide the, hide the important stuff and uh, get away from the missions. And the Padres ended up retreating. One account I read was they retreated into the hills, but I personally think they probably went up to maybe the Asistencia Santa Paula, more likely the Asistencia Santa Gertrudis. And they hid out there for a while, but you know, Hippolyte Bouchard sailed harmlessly past. He had already visited in the Santa Barbara area and was now on his way to uh, try to sack the mission at San Juan Capistrano. Because of the pirate Bouchard, a story got started about how Mission San Buenaventura used wooden bells because they didn't want to attract attention from pirates. It happened again. I have too much information. That means I'm going to have to come back. So, I hope you stick with me on this.